Hi, my name is Ashlyn Earle, and I was in Dr. Burton's undergraduate podcasting class this semester. Today, I will talk about two of the skills I learned from podcasting. First, developing an effective workflow, and second, self-promotion. But first, I would like to tell you why I took this class. I'm an English major here at BYU, and as such, I read a lot of literature, and I write a lot of essays. While liter literary analysis teaches many transferable skills, I wanted to learn how to do something new. So when I was signing up for classes last semester, English 326 caught my attention because the description mentioned podcasting. I had no idea what podcasting was, but it sounded like it didn't have anything to do with Shakespeare or Dickens or essays, and that was good enough for me. So I signed up for the class. As I mentioned before, one of the most important skills I learned in the class was how to develop an effective workflow. Workflow happens when a team completes a large project by regularly meeting small goals by appointed deadlines. Until I produced a podcast, my work and university experience had been fairly linear. As a secretary, I completed nearly the same tasks every day and as a student, I always received a complete semester calendar of the assignments and their due dates on the first day of class. But podcasting doesn't work the same way a traditional class does. It is non-linear in that you have to keep track of many things at once. For example, you may be recording episode 5 the same week you're ep editing episode 4 and researching content for episode 6. That is why developing a workflow is so important. My friend Alex and I decided to produce a podcast called I Had the Craziest Dream Last Night. Each week, listeners would submit their crazy dreams, and we would read and analyze them. While the concept was good, the first few weeks of production were pretty messy and rushed, and I always felt like we were running a little behind. Because everyone was doing something a little different, we did not have specific due dates. What we did ha have, however, were charts like the one behind me. Charts and spreadsheets helped us to set individual goals for individual episodes so that we knew the tasks which we needed to complete each week. There were challenges to finding our workflow at first. For example, it took some time to figure out which recording days worked for us and also the fact that we needed to reevaluate our concept several times. I remember the moment that we published episode three because it was the first time the production felt easy. For the first time, our episode was recorded, edited, and published according to schedule because we had finally developed an effective workflow. We had learned how to make and meet self-appointed, realistic deadlines. Once we figured out our workflow, publishing an episode was just a natural result of accomplishing little goals we had set for ourselves during the week. Another important thing I learned was how to promote myself effectively. Because the audience is such an important part of podcasting, we had to learn how to promote our podcasts via social media. I am a very private person, and I was previously really wary of social media. So when Dr. Burton suggested that we use social media and other means of digital communication to promote our podcasts, I was unsure how to do it, or even unsure if I really wanted to. But Alex and I started a blog, a Twitter account, and a Facebook page, all of which related to our podcast. We posted links to our episodes on our personal accounts, and we sent produced episodes to people whose dreams we had featured. Soon enough, a lot of people outside our immediate circles were listening to our podcast. And I have to say, it's a pretty good feeling when someone you don't know favorites your podcast on Apple. I now consider myself a social media convert. I would argue that an effective online presence communicates personal achievements better than does the neatest suit or the firmest handshake. I shared these thoughts with my dad who is a plastic surgeon in Las Vegas. I told him that the first thing his patients do after they leave his office is look him up online. After telling him about the successes I have had through online promotion, he asked me to be his social media manager a task I am confident that I can handle. As Dr. Burton says, podcasting isn't just throwing files into cyberspace. For me, it meant developing marketable skills like project management and online promotion, 
things I never imagined I would learn this semester.